Hi friends! Um, welcome to my channel again. I'm glad you're here. I have a quick, hopefully, little flip to do today to show you my thinking behind and how I kind of put together my latest uh, junk journal. Actually, I made four of these babies, two of them. They're a little bit different. The first two, the front part, all the embellishments and everything that I used inside is the same, but the front cover a little bit different and those two went out to a mama that was going to have twin girls so I thought that was so nice um, and I needed to get them out fast so I didn't get to film those but I am going to film these these are going to get ready to go out this afternoon and I want to make sure that I film them they're pretty much identical for just a few little difference like how the paper printed you see how the paper printed on the envelope sometimes a little bit different the placement of some of the embellishments are a little bit different, but everything is pretty much the same. And how I do my journals is that I'll go shop in my room and then I'll make two little piles. So I try to make the two little, if I do a piece of lace here, I want the same piece of lace here. And I try to make them as evenly as I can so that I'm using the same things and they're kind of like the same. And this, this works out really well when I only do two journals. When I do four, I guess a little crazy, but two is perfect so let me walk you through it and let me show you how I did it it's a one signature um, journal this is the back has a little collage it's a little bit more simple but I'll show you everything um, one signature it's got 55 60 pages maybe but there's and there's a lot of um, embellishments and things in here a lot of it is floating what I call floating is the kind that just has like a paper clip they're not permanently glue or attached to any of the pages and I like that flexibility because I like that for me so because sometimes you can use you can remove an embellishment take it off and then use it in another journal or you can remove it so that you can journal and then you know hide what you journaled on or whatever I think there's just more flexibility when the embellishments are like you can move them around but you are always welcome because this is your journal you're always welcome to permanently attach them to wherever you want but I thought I always try to do that little flexibility first so let me show you I think I'm gonna open this one up let me show you how I have her attached how I closed her up I use my same uh, I've used this before and I think I don't know this is like some kind of a sheer curtain or something that I picked up but within the the sheer within the fabric there's like a design so sometimes you get these because you can't make out what the design is because I think it's like a big magnolia flower or something so you don't know what it is and I think that makes it like really interesting so it wraps around twice then it wraps then the the knot it's also attached by this, which I'll show you in a bit. And then finally, I have a little journal jewelry. By the way, all of my junk journal jewelry are all recyclable. They're broken pieces of jewelry. They're things I found in some other places. So, And that's how I like it because they look a little different. Some of it is tarnished and some of it is a little beat up, but it looks nice. I think this came off a necklace, this piece. Let me show you up close. I love it because it's looks vintage it came with just can you see how it looks like they almost put some alcohol ink or vintage photo or something to grunge it up a little bit and I love that so this was a winner from the moment I saw it and it just has like a little ball pin I attached it with a little ball pin and it just goes like right at the end of all the knots and everything I just put it boop, at the end just for fun so that's that the first knot that you're going to come to is this and this belongs to, I'll show you in a minute. See, this comes right off. This is attached to that. You see that? Okay. So the main binding thing is this, which I love. And it comes right off like that. See? I love this. I love how it feels. I love touching it. I love the whole thing about it. Okay, so let's put that aside. Let me get comfortable here. So you can get a little pretty nice shot. Okay, in the front, I have two things going on. I have a journaling card back here, and I have an envelope that I made. I'm going to link, maybe I can move back a little. 
Lord. I'm going to link underneath all my sources where I found all my things. I'm going to point out a few, but I'm not going to point out everybody because I know I'm going to forget people and I feel bad about that. So I'm going to link everyone underneath. All the printables, the laces, the trims, everybody underneath. Um, and usually the inspiration for me for a journal comes from the printables. I like to use printables. I like to use everything. I like to use mix old books, mix, but the, 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 the jump board for me is it's the printables. They set the tone for the colors. They set the tones for everything. So the printables, the main printables, I used like three or four people. But the main one is from Ruby and Pearl. Her name is Heather. I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna link everybody. And she had, she did this um, kit on ballerinas. Oh my God, I fell in love with it. It's so beautiful. But anyway, that was the printable inspiration. But for example, this envelope that I made is from another, another company. So there goes that. Um, okay, so the envelope I tied is just an envelope that I, it's just a piece of paper. I turned it into like a little envelope and then I did um, a very um, just sewed. This is um, onion skin. No, this is avocado dyed, a new recipe that I made up a few weeks ago. And it turns into the prettiest pale, not on every piece of fabric, but on most the prettiest pale pinkish that I just love so I had to use that on here on this envelope and what's closing what I tied around the envelope was this little cluster that I made these uh, this little sari is the prettiest thing it's like the softest 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 feeling I mean it's just beautiful in pink and then I have some um, fibers. I want to start using some of my fibers so I tied up a little fiber and just made a little knot and then that's how I closed the envelope. And then inside the little envelope sometimes I feel bad to cover the journal because you work so hard on the on the cover and then you cover it up but I like the layers so I like having all those layers and at a glance you can see two or three layers I love that so I did I covered the front so inside, I have a little journaling card and a little vintage receipt um, that I printed. Um, this is just regular um, copy paper. I like that a lot. I like this. I think this little receipt is from a separate bundle, but I think this is also from Ruby and Pearl. And so I put that in there. There's plenty of room to journal behind the receipt and there's plenty of little room that you can journal in there too. So that goes in the front. And then in the back of the envelope, I wanted to have a little bit, I wanted to show a little bit of this blue just to bring out some of the um, color in the sari. So I used this journaling card. This is from the Valerina kit. This is a beautiful journaling card and this trim I am in love with this is from Sheila and her store her you can purchase from her she's over at Boho Daydream Facebook group on Facebook and this is from her and a lot of the trims that I used are from her and another this is from someone else I'm going to link that underneath but look how pretty that looks and then I did my crazy zigzag zigzag stitch all around and you can journal in the back so there goes that now this is the actual journal itself and I did spend a lot of time on the cover let me show you let me go a little slow and I tried to I put this little beads here for a little dangle this is really pretty this beautiful trim up here this gorgeous trim is from my friend uh, Roxy over at a mom's impression on Etsy. I'm going to link her store underneath and I think this is also from her store. Like I said, I'm not going to mention everybody, but I will link everybody underneath. So I first start with my, um, see there's a little fold here. I made like a little tiny little spine here. Um, what I use, because I wanted it to be flexible but I wanted it so that you can feel it you know like flexible soft but at the same time sturdy for the backing of the journal I just used plain and this works really well folder this all started with just a folder from some folders that I picked up and then I started doing my layers 
my first layer is plain old brown lunch paper bag right back here i wanted another little extra layer so i used that and the primary paper is just this one piece right here that's beautiful this is also from ruby and pearl and then i did my own little collage this is like this french script paper that i love that i use a lot uh, i got a link that i'm not don't remember where i got that from but i gotta link it and then i have a little bit of collage down here too also going on and then once I do my collage, I go ahead and I sew. And you can see some of the brown paper bag over here also. You see? On my layers. I've got a whole bunch of layers going on. I got this on the bottom. I got a little bit of tool here. I got the brown paper bag. I got this trim. There's just a lot going on in this. How I like my journals to have a lot of layers, but at the same time, kind of like discrete layers. Like... I can't explain it. You got to look for them, but they're there. So then once I did my paper collage, I started picking out my laces and trims that I wanted to use. And this focal piece is so beautiful. And it has like a little, like this pink little sheer that's right underneath it. So I decided that Paisley, I love Paisley. So I decided that was going to be my feature focal thing. So then I started looking for light pink pieces and dark pink pieces and that's what I did here I found what I was looking for so this is one piece this is one piece this is one piece this is one piece so there's a lot of and this up here is one piece so there's a lot going on <laughs> um then I wanted this was kind of like the inspiration for the colors came from this uh sari silk that I had to ruffle guys this takes me a long time to ruffle this I think I saw, what's this little, what's this girl's name from Las Vegas? Tsunami Rose. She did a tutorial or she showed uh, on her sewing machine, she attached like this foot that helped her make the ruffle. I don't know if that exists. I got to look that up. It does obviously because I saw her doing it, but I have to look it up. I wonder if my machine, probably my machine is so prehistoric that it won't take that, but I had to do this by hand and that takes me a long time to just you know push the fabric in and fold push and fold but it takes a long time but anyway and I like it kind of like uneven I don't want it perfect so I did all that and I did a little bit extra just to have it so I think when you ruffle this sari I don't know I love it because you don't you can't even see less where the fading you know where where one tone ends and the other tone begins when it's ruffled it makes it I think even a little bit more interesting so I did all that and then for the back, I just wanted a support. Uh, I used this really pretty fabric that I wanted, this really pretty trim that it's an off-white. It's not quite beige, but it's off-white. And I wanted to introduce a little bit of that pale color because of the paper. And then in the back, I kept the back a little bit simple. I just did a little collage and then my sewing. And then you can see more of the brown paper bag here. And... Um, more of this trim this is from a tablecloth i only have a little bit left and then i added a little bit more of the ruffle sorry on top okay so let's open this baby up so i can show you well let me show you a little bit of the little uh, jewelry before i mess it all up but i have mainly i have three pieces because there was so much going on here i didn't want to um, add too much so i have three pieces of jewelry going on here I have this, and this is all from Salvage, um, like I said, jewelry. This little tassel was a pair of earrings that I found not too long ago, and I made this raggedy little bow to go with it. And it's just a cute little tassel, and it has the cutest little rhinestone pink. And then here I just tied a little bow with tulle, and then a little stone. This is glass, a glass pink stone, and that just kind of dangles right there. I like that. And then down here I have another, on a, with a little ball pin, I have another little cluster of jewelry right on this, the bottom of this. So in case you hang it or you put, so you can see it when you lay it down, you can see a little bit of the jewelry dangling. So that's the, and that's the top. And let me show you the bottom. And I've got different, you know, things peeking out. Okay, so let's get to it. 
So when you open her up, I made a, oh, and I love this trim. I still have a little bit left. I made a little tool with this material. I made a little tool, um, little pocket here. And I added a feature little piece here, some gold, this pretty trim that I wanted to act as a frame for the, I want it to barely be peeking so that you can barely see the little balls, the little design on the, on the trim from right behind the sari silk ruffle. And then I added down here some of that meshy um, tablecloth right here so you can almost see the corner of the tablecloth then another see those so I even like to do layers within fabric and sometimes I don't like my layers to I like my layers to how do you say to overlap but not like I could have brought this gold all the way at the end but I don't I don't want I don't like that so I pushed it back a little so I can see my three layers at a glance I don't know that's just how I think so anyway, so in this little pocket here, this is what I used to cover the back. And I went ahead and I reinforced the spine with um, some more of that French script paper right back there. And I have a little collage. You can't really see it, but it, down here there's a little, little, little collaging on this pretty wallpaper fabric. And then here I have a um, pretty image from the collection that you can journal in the back. I have this little journaling card and then I have this little receipt or little letter that can be used as a journaling card. So that goes here in this little area. Now for the front, how I like to do my journals is that I also want to see layers at a glance. I want to see the different layers and you don't know where something ends or something starts. I like that look. so. You know, kind of like a junky junk journal. So that's what I did. So for here, I found this. I remember where I found that. And I have it here. Let me show you because I loved it. I was wondering where I got that from. That is from a runner. It's a runner that I found. So obviously this is not vintage. But look how pretty. So I, it's like an eyelet. Like a pink eyelet. And I love it. You do know that I am going to use this pink somewhere. I don't know where. But that's what I use for here. That tiny little piece. Is, I made it like a, like a little eyelid, sheer eyelid little panel right here. Then I have my vintage doilies that I just love how they feel. Here I have some designer paper with uh, those floating, a uh, little floating embellishment. It's just a plain paper clip that I have with, I just did a little uh, knot. I don't want to, I don't want to break her. She's stuck on the, well, let me just leave her so I don't want to unbreak her. But anyway, here I have a little ticket and another little ticket that you can journal on. So this was kind of like sandwiched in between. And then the little um, journaling card. And that goes there. Oh, and I also had back here, obviously, I had, I think I had it like this, a little um, tuck spot, like a little upside down little tuck spot that you can remove and put it someplace else. And in here I have a little journaling card like this with one of um, Tracy Fox's little labels. She's got the cutest labels. I use them a lot. She has a new printable. I think she has some new labels that I have not gotten yet, but I will. And they just kind of wrap around the journaling card. Then I have a little ticket and a little tag. And all of this is from different people, but they all work well together, so I use them. A little hymnal page. And then here on this glassine bag, and I love how it sounds, I have, see this is the sari trim without being ruffled. So it's still beautiful. And this is from Sheila, which is this from this. I just keep cutting little pieces and putting them everywhere. I love it. And then I did a little collage and another label. And then here I just have one little journaling card that I love. This is my favorite image 
from her and I talked a little bit about this image in my other video I'm gonna link that video underneath and uh, I turned this into a journal and I love this trim up here because in my head I'm thinking that this trim looks like a chandelier so there and also in my head when I was making when I was putting this journal together once I already picked my principles and I picked everything that I was going to use and I was going to put this uh, journal together I was thinking who would I love it who would I love for it to own the journal so I imagine that I told this story in my groups but I imagine that I was making this journal for a young lady who was a ballerina and she was just accepted to the ballet company that she always wanted to be in so she needed a journal, I guess, to maybe journal on about all her practice and all the hard work that she has to put in with this company and her travels and her performances. And also I made a special page in the back that maybe she can journal when she becomes a prima ballerina, which is like her dream. So I kind of thought that it wouldn't it be nice if somebody like that would really use this journal. I thought that would be special anyway. So that's what I was thinking. So I was inspired by ballerina. And then I remember that I had a really pretty ballerina stamp. I had to find it. I think a friend of mine gifted it to me quite a few years back. So I have the stamp here and there and everywhere I stamped it. But I always backed it with my script stamp. So there's very light little bits of stamp. Sometimes I did the script stamp and I didn't stamp the ballerina. But there's just little touches. And I think this stamp was made for this journal. It's perfect. So my little ballerina is going to keep this journal to keep her thoughts in. Um, another music sheet. This is from a book that I just picked up. But the print looks awfully familiar. I mean, it looks to me like uh, Prima. Old, not Prima. Was it Prima? Uh, no, it wasn't Prima. I forgot, but it reminds me of a paper collection. But it's a book. It's a page from a book. This is some um, tea dye ledger paper. This is some of my tea dye paper. And I did a little collage. And put a little bit of the plain beige sari. And here's that little piece of jewelry down here. Here I have another receipt. Which is really pretty because it's got that faded pink. More music sheet. This is a different paper. It's not onion skin paper, but it's not copied paper. It's a different paper. And I did my script stamp. So as you can tell, there's plenty of room to journal on. This is also from Ruby and Pearl, but it's a different kit. See how you can mix whatever you want. Um, there's that again. And then over here, I put a I have this attached with a paper clip. That's where this little piece of jewelry goes. I added a little bit of this trim that I had left over. I think it's the same trim as over here. And these are two little journaling cards. They go here. And then this beautiful tag. I love this tag. How this tag turned out. This was the inspiration for the tag. I use. I think this is from my friend Roseanne. And then just did a little collage. Again, some of that uh, ombre trim, and then you can journal in the back. You can see all the different layers in the back, and I like that. So she goes right here, and then right in front of the tag, there's a little ticket. I'm thinking maybe a ticket from a show she went or something. Right there. I love this receipt in this little soft baby blue. I think it looks beautiful. Plenty of journaling. I did a lot of sewing in this journal all over the place as much as I could get. A uh, smaller printable, more music sheet. See, this is the other side of that book page. This is the other side. Then on this page, I also have another floating embellishment. And I use this paper clip. This is where I use the, um, the pretty little tassel earring, earring that I took apart. And then here I have three little journaling. I have a journaling card. This is from someone else, but it just, like I said, works well together. Uh, this little card, I just embellished. I have like three layers of things going on, and you can journal in the back. And then here is another envelope. I love all these envelopes kind of like all over the place. I sewed on the side, 
And inside this envelope, what do we have? Because I forgot. I think I showed this before. I have more little journaling spots and little places to journal on. I have a little ledger paper that you can just journal in here. And this is a real vintage, uh, I think it's some kind of ticket um, that you can journal in the back. So that goes there. And, oh, I love this tag too. This tag, I had it here also kind of like floating. Look how pretty. And I didn't have to do much to this paper because it already came like that. I just attached some of my newest, my latest tea dye uh, tool fabric and then a little bit of the sari silk on top. And then I put it next to this blue receipt because I thought that would look pretty together. A little piece of paper. Um, ledger paper, uh, another printable in that pretty pink, uh, the other side of the uh, eyelet um, see-through fabric, doily, this was just a little leftover I had, I thought it would look cute here, this is another little printable, some ledger paper, I love these colors. See, there's plenty of room to journal on. Now, on the center of the journal, I left it plain. I was going to put some beads. You're welcome to put some beads if you want. But there's so much going on here that I just wanted to leave it plain. I thought that might look like a little bit more elegant. So here I have a paper clip. Like I said, all this comes apart. And then on this side, I have a little ticket that you can journal in the back. And then a little tag. Okay, and then all that is here is just the envelope is flipped on the page. But in front of the envelope, I have another receipt that you can journal in the back. And then I have a little journaling card with this really pretty image. And I thought they gave her a little bonnet or a little crown or something, so I put that there. And you can journal in the back. And I love, love, love her dress. So that goes in front of the envelope. This envelope is so pretty that you can leave it in the front and maybe just put it, you know, don't hide the envelope. But I, you can do whatever you like. I love this paper. Look how pretty. And then I um, just did a little sheer fabric here for some interest and a little trim on top. And then inside I went ahead and I made a little um, palm size little journal. For the cover, I did the cover with a little glassine bag and this little image, so sweet, that you can, again, journal in the back, and then a little label here, and then it's just a, just a little journaling book. I use all kinds of ledger paper, a little bit of some printables, just a little bit, pretty much of everything for your little secret journal that's right in here, and I love the sequence trim here. I love that. And I'm going to add, i got to remember that, but I'm going to add, I have some sequin. I didn't add it to the journal because, again, I thought it might be like a bit much, but I love this so much that I'm going to go ahead and send, look how pretty, how that would look. I'm going to go ahead and send a little bit of this with, let me see if I can show you all, with the journals going to show me yeah I'm going to send a little bit of this with the journal so that you can add it maybe play with it a little bit if you like but I thought that to be honest I just didn't want to keep going because I can get carried away very easily and make it like real personal and I really wanted it to be to be the owners whoever got this I wanted it for them to make it there so hopefully you can add your little touches okay here we have Another little printable. Hang on, I'm going to be right back. Okay, here we go. Here on this one little, um, I'm kind of hiding this. This is a really pretty printable. Here I have a paper clip. All this comes apart. And the paper clip is like a music note. I thought that was kind of nice. And then I have a little tag and I added a little piece of jewelry that has a little bit of that pink on there. And I tied a little 
I, I think this is like a fishnet um, little bow on there. So that's what's holding this little cluster together. And then in the front I have a little ticket here that you can journal in the back. I have a tiny little tag with a little bit of uh, that trim that I show you that's in the front, this trim right here. I took one of the little circles and I made a little tiny tiny little tag with it and you can journal in the back. And then here is a little journaling card which is a little bit of a, it's a library card. I showed this before. I did a little cluster here. This is from a bracelet and then in here I just attached like the little envelope goes right in here and I think I have put something in the envelope too. Let me see, what did I put in here? Oh, just more little journaling spots. This is from my friend Roseanne. From her printables, she's got really pretty printables too. And she makes really pretty journals. Her journals, I mean, you know, she takes custom orders and everything. I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna link her underneath too. And then the back of this, look how pretty this printable is. Like, you don't even have to cover that up if you don't want to. Back here, I made this little card that again you can journal in the back and I think she is so sweet I got some music paper going on underneath and then a little bit of fabric here she's adorable she goes back here another one of my doilies a uh, little bit more of the eyelet fabric journaling space journaling space and then here I added this is some of my I think this is a combination uh, coffee and I think it's coffee and avocado coffee and tea I don't remember but look how the fabric takes a different darker and a little lighter depending on what kind of cotton it is I don't know I'm not sure how but it just works that way so I love this trim so much because it's so sheer so I added it here and then I added a piece of sari right here and this is a little uh, tuck spot right here. You can put something in here if you like. Uh, and this little flip, this is one of the few things that I did attach permanently. But you can cut all the pieces up if you like and use it, you know, use little bits and pieces to embellish some of your work. I love this. I love this. Um, so that's on here. And then on, on top of it, I made like a little cluster just let me show you up close in case you guys haven't seen it. I made a little cluster right up here with some of that French script, some of that paper from the envelope that I show you, one of Tracy's labels, and then there's just like layers and layers going on here with some more of that pink. Oh, I don't remember where that was at. And what else do we have? This is the back. This is a book page. Oh, I love this trim. Look how pretty that is. Um, plenty of room to journal on. Journaling space. I love when my pages do that. Then here I just have a piece of sari again with another piece of that pretty uh, trim. And then I just tie a little knot on the top. The back of that printable. Music sheet. Of course, you know, you can journal any place you want. You can even journal any place you want, really. So, like, for example, me, when I journal, sometimes I remove. That's why I like these all my embellishment to be removable because it makes my journal a little bit more flat and I can write more at ease. So that's also another reason why I, I like the embellishments to be removable. I Some people, some of the ladies that have purchased journals from me they do not write in their journals they just want to look at them and I think that I do have a couple of journals that I I don't think I'll ever write on them they're just like a work of art in itself from other ladies that I love and admire and I'm just not going to write on them but there are some that I do write on so I want to give you the option of making it comfortable for you in case you decide you want to write on them here I created a little pocket with this material, this is a stretchy material, so you can really load up this pocket if you want. And then I went ahead and put in a piece of this really pretty, I don't know if you can see it, but it's like the softest. This is beige back here. And then this is like the softest, softest pink. Let me see if you can see it. 
So you got the stretchy material in the back, this little swag here of this really soft pink. It's so pretty. And then I did a little collage here and another label, Tracy's label. And then here all I did was I put another receipt that you can journal in the back. Use it as a journaling little spot. And then I have a little card that you can journal and another pretty image. I love this image too because I like the flowers that she has on her. It's like a swag of flowers right here. Actually, this swag right here is what inspired me to do <laughs> this swag right here. I don't know why, but it did. Um, ledger paper. Plenty of room. We're almost done. Um, I just love that stamp. Um, wallpaper printable. And then here is just the back of the glassine bag. And I did a little collage here with this really pretty image. Isn't she pretty? I think she has wings. I'm not sure. But I did a little cluster here. And then I did a little cluster right here. With tool, some of that trim, some of the sari. And then for this pin, this pin wouldn't open up because it's so rusted. It didn't want to open. But I love the beads and I love the shade of the beads. And I really wanted to use it. So all I did was I attached a little ball pin and now I can just dangle or do whatever and I can still get to enjoy the pretty beads. The back of the glassine bag is a little plain, but you can definitely journal on here. I did a little cluster, a little label, music sheet, another place to journal on. You can journal everywhere. And then finally the back. This is the inside of the back page and that's it and she's all done so that's it guys my prima ballerina journal i hope you liked her if you have any questions on anything please do not hesitate to ask and thank you all for watching and i'll see you on the next video god bless bye bye i hope you liked her bye